Are you ready? So look what we've got here. We've got the actual box that just arrived today. I am super excited because this actually came two days before the original uh, target date that it was supposed to come. It was supposed to arrive December 28th. I got it December 26th, the day after uh, Christmas. Uh, again, for those of you that don't know, uh, this is the GT Omega Racing Pro model. It is the exact same model that I currently have um, upstairs that I use in all my videos. I've got the green on black. This is the blue on black. And uh, I'm absolutely looking forward to unboxing this for you guys and doing a little bit of a, a building session here in my garage because there's only places I get like a decent amount of significant lighting so that I can do this at night. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and rip open the box. I, last time I did this, um, I don't have the video on my channel up anymore. Um, the last, uh, so I'm happy I'm doing this again because I've been dying to give you guys an update on um, my chair, which I will be doing pretty soon, giving you guys kind of an overview and a review. Um, and this one, I'm basically, glad that I get to do another unboxing video because the last one didn't go so well. So hopefully this one goes a little bit better, a little bit more decent than the last one. Uh, but again, GT Omega Racing Pro model. So um, last time I did this was about three years ago. So I've had that chair for three total years and I don't remember a thing on how I built that at all. Don't remember it at all. And I think I might just cut myself here. Should always go away from you, never towards you. But this is a massive box. Uh, I couldn't carry it myself. And uh, FedEx, when they delivered it, could not carry it up the stairs, which kind of sucked. Um, so I'm actually glad they didn't though, because I ended up deciding to do it down here. So without further ado, this is the GT Omega Racing Pro model chair. And we are about, we are about to build it. All right. Oh my, I can't believe this. I'm so, so ready for this fan. I love building things. I'm not good at it. I just love doing it. It gives me a sense of accomplishment when I've built something that works. Again, I've had mine for three years. I've had this chair for three years. I've never had a chair last me more than six months to a year. They usually like start tearing off on the arms, you know, like the, uh, the, the outer layer of the chair just starts to rip or it starts to peel and it starts to flake all over the floor. These, I've had it for three years and it hasn't, there's nothing wrong with it and it's still working good. So this one's gonna last for another three plus years, no matter what. So I'm looking forward to it. Let's just go ahead and start taking this out. Uh, what else we got? We've got, okay, so this is back, oh my gosh, how heavy is this? Uh, oh, for those of you wondering, that is Toby. He's a golden retriever. He's down here. Just chilling. He's just chilling. He might help. He might help. You never know. So, let's go ahead and... Oh my gosh, this is going to be heavy down. So this is... Oh my gosh, this is so heavy. Alright, the packaging is absolutely on point speed. Alright, so where do I put this? Where do I put this? Alright, put that there for now. I'm going to organize it and take everything out. You know what I mean? And then I'll give you guys like a kind of like an overlay of everything on the floor. So let me go ahead and take everything out of the box and then you guys will be able to see everything on the floor and I can point out to you what everything is. And then I'll bring you guys back to here where I'm talking and getting into building sessions. So cue the little cinematic montage type thing. ready to go show you guys what I've just recently pulled out so of course seat armrests all in one attached and good to go you got the back portion of the chair uh, you got of course the wheel stand and the wheels you've got the uh, the uh, headrests and backrests over here uh, this is the backrest that goes around the um, this part and this goes on the top which is the uh, the headrests um, actually vice versa this is the backrest. This is the headrest. Uh, we also got here, which is where all the tools are and everything. And of course the pumps to the chair and everything like that, a little pump. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and unwrap everything and uh, make sure we are good to go.
So, for those of you wondering what I just pulled out of the box, that was actually a lot more than I remembered and expected. However, it makes total sense because where was all of these items anyway? So, um, we've got the uh, the wheels, of course. There was a pack of wheels that were ready to go that we're just going to quickly install onto the wheel stand. Um, this is the main contraption. Don't know what it's called. Let's see if what it's called. We've got the, uh, well, first of all, we've got these. These are side covers. You'll see what they are. They're basically covers that cover, like, I just make the chair look a little bit more appealing. Uh, okay, so this is the gas lift piston. This is the he one of the heaviest things I've ever seen for something this small. This is a gas lift uh, piston, and this is what makes your chair go up and down. Uh, you've got the, uh, the mechanism that actually does that, which it has the little pump, little pump. This is what has the pump that you pump your chair to go up and let it go down. Uh, of course, we've got the tools, which are right here. Uh, we've also got a couple of screws right here. And uh, what is this? This is, this is, I don't know what this is. Oh, these are the piston covers. Okay, so this is the piston cover. I thought it had a better name than that, but it's just a piston cover. So uh, we're gonna follow these instructions. I usually tend to, when I do things, not follow instructions, but I don't know what I'm doing. I don't remember what I did. So let's follow the instructions. So what do we got going on here? Uh, number one, wheels, all right, easy mode. I remember doing this. This is actually my favorite part to do. Shit, that's it. Okay, well that was the reason why I like doing this before because of how easy it is to put these wheels in. So, just go ahead and slide them into the socket. Good to go. And then once they're all in, turn it over, give it a little bit of pressure, and they will fall into place. Very, very easy to put in. You have nothing really to worry about when it comes to these at all. Uh, let's see, why don't you go in, Margie? There we go. This one's actually tighter than I would think. Go in. There we go. Okay, got two more. Put this one in there. Go pop. You'll hear a little pop sound. You probably don't hear it from the camera, actually. The camera's actually farther away than you guys might think. Just wanted to make sure I get everything. Even this guy napping who's right behind me. And then, once the last wheel's in, you should hear a pop. Why, why did I know hear pop? Come on, Pop. There we go. Okay. So now that they're all in, put a little bit of pressure on all of them. Just to make sure they're good to go. All right, cool. All the wheels connected, ready to go, except one. One is definitely looking off. Let's get stuck. This one's not all the way in. There we go. Okay, wheels all the way in, good to go. What is next? We've got something to do with the piston. Um, okay, so the piston's going in. What side up? I'm assuming it's gonna go this way. And it looks like I am correct. That is F2, right? F2, F2, F2. F2 freestylers fam. And then we're gonna put this in on top of that. Oh my gosh, look how good I am at building things fam. Easy peasy lemon squeeze. All right, next up, number two. Oh, no, no, no. So, okay, so this is where I had terrible time. Whew, it's not hard to do, but let me just go ahead and move this to the side here. Move these little cushions to the side as well. Go ahead and get some like little product placement in there. Uh, put these little covers over here. Get the bad boy done over here because this is where it gets messy. All right, so. Got to deal with these two bad boys, putting them together, and it's not easy at all. All right, so what do we got going on here? So we're just going to put that to that, and then when it comes to number three, so we're connecting that to that. Okay, so let's turn this around. Actually, it'd probably be easier if I just did this. So I have my mats mainly so it doesn't get dirty, for those of you wondering. All right, so, okay, well, I'll get that up when I need to. Alright, so how do we do this? So A to B, A to B, A to B, but I don't really need that step. It could just go to step three because that's when the tools and things come in. And I need to figure out what I'm actually doing with these. And I'm missing a screw, it's underneath everything. Alright, let's get that over there. Alright, so what do we got cooking on here? Alright, team, so I figured it out. The mate screws, the M8s, 
are actually already in. I gotta take them out to use as screws to attach them to this. So uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get these screws out. I believe there's how many of them? There's eight, there's how many? Holy crap. I gotta get, there's eight mate screws? And how many am I supposed to do? One, two, three. Oh man, I got some work. All right, let's do this. We gotta go ahead and attach them to the base or the seat portion of the chair by doing the exact same thing we just did. Instead of taking them off, we put them on. Uh, we're basically gonna be attaching them through the holes that are on these two things on here on the sides. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. The last screw going in, uh, we should be good to go. I mean, I mean, I don't know why I needed two people to do this last time. I might not have gotten to that part yet, but I remember I had someone help me hold this in place while I did the screws. It's actually very easy, especially if you use the uh, the holes on here and just get it situated and sorted out. Especially start with the side that's already up and make sure this is on the back side because you can't really fold it this way because the seat comes out. Um, so once this is on the back side, and just start with the um, the side that's already up that can't move, you're pretty much good to go. It was actually very, very easy to put this on and secure it. Start getting my little chill on. Actually, this is really, this is next level comfortable right now, fam. I'm not going to lie. Uh, so I don't got any light. So what is next? Um, we got to fasten. Oh, hey. Uh, so we got to fasten on the plastic portions of this. So let's go ahead and make this a little bit neater. So how do we do this? Um, so G has to go on to that, has to go on to that. All right, so I need the one with the four holes. Okay, so plastic portion numero uno. This is G, G goes where? What, what, what am I doing fam? What is G, what is G? What is she? G is the side cover, fam. I, I understand that. There's two different side covers. There's this one, and there's this one. Okay, so this one's definitely going to go on this side, right? And then this one's going to go on this side, or is it the other way around? I think it's the other way around now. Does this go on this side? No chance, because the mechanism's on the other side. All right, so this goes on this side, this goes on that side, but how do I, how do I install? Uh, I need a screw, I believe, so I'm gonna need an M6. All right, so I'm gonna need an M6, the one with the four holes. So there's one with four holes. We got the, the one, two, three, four, going that way. And then what do we got over here? We got the one, two, three, four going that way. I mean, that's just common sense on which way it goes. And I gotta do both sides. All right, so we're gonna get the M6 and put it directly in the middle and attach it to the seat. All right, that took longer than uh, anticipated. So let's go ahead and get these screws out. Go ahead and attach this to the chair. All right, so the screws are definitely going in this. Perfect. 
And then, just gonna, okay, so let's take the screw out, attach this to the base of the chair. There's a little circle here that's gonna go into this little circle here. And then once that is in place, put that in. Got the other tool now instead of the other one that I was using. And you can kind of guess, I shouldn't have taken that long to figure this out, but you can kind of guess which one, which plastic piece goes on which side. Uh, I'll go ahead and flip this around so you guys can see and understand what I'm talking about on the other side. You probably can't see that right now. Uh, but it's actually very, very easy. I hope this is good. This doesn't feel like it's going into. Actually, it is. Okay, cool. So, huge screw, man. Okay, but yeah, now you guys can see what this plastic part is for. It's to hide all the screws and make this chair looking fresh. All right, so let's go ahead and flip this around. Oh my gosh. Heavy as. All right, so as you can see, this side's got this, which is the pump and to move the, the back forward and backwards, which I'll show you at the end. Um, so, go ahead and put this into place. I said let's put this into place, team. Put this into place. Okay, there we go. Snap it in, team. There we go. Snap that boy in. And we do the same thing, part two of the screwing. So this hasn't been difficult so far. Someone that doesn't know how to build things is being able to uh, build things. So, I mean, if you don't know how to build anything, uh, this should be pretty easy. Just follow the instructions. Again, I don't think this is going in, but we'll figure it out. Just make sure we don't get a cramp here, team. Is it going? Oh, okay, there we go. It is going in. Again, massively large screws. They take forever. Twist and turn. Twist and turn. Twist and turn. Twist and turn. Keep it going, team. Easy enough. Let's go ahead and twist this back around. So I am feeling comfortable here. Now, don't know what is next, but I believe it is one of the impossible parts. That did require two feet. This is so comfortable, I'm not gonna lie. All right, so what is next? I'm, oh, hoo, 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 hoo. Okay, okay. All right, so I need some more mates. This is where the other four mates come in. I gotta mount the mechanism underneath the seat there. I love how they use the word mechanism. It's got no other name for it. Everything else got like a decent name. It's just a mechanism. Uh, underneath the seat base, using four mate screws. The screws have been tightened underneath the base seat. Thank you for telling me this. Now, uh, please pay attention to the direction of the mechanism and make sure the handle is on the right side. So, we are now putting the mechanism onto the uh, base or the underneath of the seat or the chair. It actually does say front, which you guys can read right here, which means the front of the chair is down there, and it also wants this on the right-hand side, and if I was to lift this up, that would be the right side. So, that is where it should go, and let's go ahead and hand screw some of these first. Alright, so with all the screws now in place uh, via hand, I no longer have to hold the mechanism in place. Simply just put the screws in, and I believe what's next is attaching the whole chair to the, uh, the pump, to the base, to the wheels, to the thing that's over here to my right, and we should almost be done with this. Uh, this is taking a lot quicker than last time. It actually took me a good two to two and a half hours to do this last time. I haven't cut anything out of this video just to let you guys know. I might have sped up some of the portions, but those portions that have sped up 
They actually, they, they definitely did, like, unscrewing the screws and taking them on and off, the things that I just made with music in the background, that did not take long at all. So, I mean, recording so far has probably just been about a good 20-ish minutes. Um, and most of those minutes was me just looking at the instructions, trying to analyze things for no reason. So I could have done this a lot quicker. It's actually really quick. I would love to do a, a sponsored GT Omega Racing who can build the chair the fastest gets what you know that large one they always bring to events that big massive one that people just get to say okay it actually won't even fit in the house okay well the biggest chair that they have that fits in your house they should bring like the top 10 gt omega racing affiliates or sponsors which i'm probably not one of them to be honest seven of them will probably be the side men so that kind of sucks for me but uh the winner, whoever can build the chair the fastest, gets a free model. That would be pretty late, not gonna lie. A free model and a free model to give away to their fans. That would be late. But, without further ado, let's run and see what's next because the mechanism is now in place. I think, I hope I didn't do this wrong, I hope. It feels like it should be out more, but I don't know, we'll figure it out. All right, so next up, Insert the gas lift piston onto the notch of the mechanism, which is this. I'm kind of scared about this part. I'm not going to lie. I think this is what required me to use two. We twist it. That way. And we now sit in a chair that I hope is built. I, I really hope I built this. I'm not going to lie. That part I now remember is the part that required me to do two people. But I wasn't smart enough to start from the back instead of just placing this on top with no vision of the bottom of the seat. I figure things out, fam. Alright, so what is next? What is next? Seat bracket adjustment. All right. Backward of seat headrest. Lift up the handle and adjust it to the most comfortable angle. Retract the back seat. Pull the handle upwards. Lean against the back seat and gently unmark your that. Okay. So this is the chair is pretty much done. It's now going to teach you. Yeah, everything's set. This is exactly how mine is. So it's now going to teach you kind of how how the chair works and what you can do with the chair. So there's a little lever right here. And if you, oh my gosh, did they upgrade this? I think they upgraded the lever. All right, well, let's check this out. Make sure I don't fall, get myself situated. So there's a lever here. And if you lean back, this chair actually goes pretty damn far back. It's really, really comfortable. And I'm gonna show you how far it goes back. I've just never been comfortable doing it because I always feel like I'm gonna fall. So yeah. I'll show you how far it goes back without me sitting in the chair. So, simple enough, there's a lever here, you lift it, and then you push back. And it can go, it can go farther than that, but it can go almost a flat 180 degrees. So it, it goes really, really far. So you pull the lifter up, the lever up, and it lifts, and you just basically find a comfortable position for you to sit in. I like it just a little bit, okay, that's a little bit too much. I like it pretty much directly 90 degrees up. Just that one, the one notch to the back. All right, what is next? Uh, seat height adjustment. I'm assuming that's the, yeah, okay, lower the seat, sit down on the seat, lift up the handle. It's just like a, just like when you go to a, what's it called? Uh, a hair salon. So you can go either really low, it's the same, it's the lever that's on the same side, so it's not this one, that, the handlebar. It's kind of like a little lever on the bottom of the seat. Just like you were, you want to pump it up, sit off the chair, use it. What's up, buddy? And uh, basically, it goes up as high as you want, or put pressure on it, use the lever, and you go as low as you want. It's as easy as that. Adjustment of arms. Oh, this is this is where it gets crazy, fam. This is where it gets crazy. All right. So the arms do a lot of things. The arms do a lot of things. So there's a little notch, a little button down here on the sides that allows you to, when you lift up, 
it brings the the armrest up. So you can do the same thing on this side. You push it up, lift up as well, and you got higher armrests. And that's the max height is where I usually use it. What are you doing here, buddy? You wanna go lay down? Go lay down. Come on. So next up. Oh, it also has different levels. So I mean, if you don't want it all the way down, you can kind of use it halfway up. It snaps in place and locks. But I keep it all the way up top. But for now, because I'm going to be taking this upstairs, I'm going to push it all the way. So that was button one on the side again, up and down. Uh, you also got another button that is on the inside of the armrest. It's directly in the middle. If you push that, it allows you to tilt the armrest inside and outside, left and right. You can either go like this, have it go out, or you can have it like this, have it go in. Go ahead and put it in the middle. It snaps in place in all three directions. There's also another piece that is towards the front. If you were to have your arms on the armrest, they're actually right where your thumbs would normally go. If you push that button, you can push the armrest forward. You can also push the armrest back. So if you had it at max, where I usually have it, so you push these up, you keep these at the center, and you push these forward, and you're good to go. And last but not least, we've got one more thing, or two more things to actually do before this chair is ready to go upstairs. It's actually to put these cushions. So we've got two cushions here. Again, um, one is for your back, one is for your neck. So let's go ahead and attach the back portion on first because that's actually the most difficult one of the two. The one that goes around the, uh, around the, uh, the top of the chair for your neck is actually really, really easy. Take it out of the packaging. I actually have extras of these and I use them in my car. So it makes my car look a lot cooler. So I got GT Omega Racing rocked out in my car. So how do we install this? If I remember correctly, one goes underneath the chair and one goes around the chair. So if I pop this through and grab it on the other side, that is done, and then I do the same for this side. I snap this off, put that forward, make sure this is straight. Don't want it tangled up when it's inside. Go ahead and show you guys what I'm trying to do here. So I'm pushing it through, taking it underneath the bottom of the chair. And now that that's done, let's go ahead and pull this all the way. Get these bad boys, put them through the holes here. And now that we are on towards the back, go ahead and get a little snappy action on, as simple as that. So once we got that through the hole, this to here, and you're good to go. And of course, with that being said, you can lift it up to wherever you want it. Uh, these things basically move wherever you want them as well. And you got pretty much a really, really comfortable back seat. Last but not least for this chair, I'm absolutely stoked about the color, by the way. Um, I wish I got this color, not gonna lie. Actually, probably the next one I'll probably get, because I got the black, uh, the green on black, this is the blue on black. The next one I think I'll probably get is the red on black, and the reason being is a lot of stuff that I'm getting nowadays is red and black. My mouse not red and black, so I started off with that. Right, so now that we're gonna be putting this on, I mean, you could literally take this off and go through the holes and have it low on your uh, upper back. So what I mean by that is put these through the holes and have it sitting there on your upper back. It's actually pretty comfortable there, um, but I like to keep this around my neck area, which is around here. So I don't really need to do this. Just wrap it around the, uh, the headrest of the chair, make sure it's tightly fit, tightly snugged, and pull it down. There you go. And let's just make sure this is comfortable and ready to be sent upstairs. Yes, it is. Also for this, um, if you don't want this and you still want to keep it on the chair for some cool style, you can go ahead and a lot of people do this. Just go ahead and flip it around to the other side. So. You can see it's still there. Headrest on the other side. You're not missing out on anything. It's got that aesthetic feel. And again, this one that's on your lower back is just so, so comfortable. And sometimes I use the chair like this. A lot of you see 
Um, when I'm not, when I'm playing games and I'm really focusing, I tend to not to use the neck rest. I just use the back rest. So I flip it around to that side, which you guys can see right now. But when I'm relaxing, I'm watching YouTube or I'm watching a movie or something, I definitely got the headrest on. I pop this down to my lower back. I pull the chair and the trigger and lean back all the way. And I'm just watching for like hours on hours. This chair is really, really comfortable, but that is it. We've unboxed the GT Omega Racing Pro and we've also built the GT Omega Racing Pro. This is my second chair. Thank you very much GT Omega Racing for sending me this bad boy. Um, I'm just absolutely shocked and humbled by uh, being able to do this again. And uh, this time I hope it turns out a lot better than the first one. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close this video out in just a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and get this upstairs and I will see you guys there. Alrighty everybody, so to close off this video, uh, I wanted to do a little bit of a comparison between my chair and the new one. Uh, my chair is the green on black over here that I've had for three years. This is the new chair that we just did the unboxing for and the building for last night. Uh, the blue on black. Uh, my dad was able to use it last night. He absolutely loves the design. He absolutely loves the comfort. And he absolutely loves how much this chair can do. And he absolutely loved the part where the little handlebar on the side that you can go ahead and pull back almost 180 degrees. Uh, he absolutely loves this chair. That's all I can say. Um, pretty much, I want to do a little bit of a comparison between the two chairs. Um, first off, starting with the, um, the bottom of the chair, moving our way up to the top. So the wheels seem exactly the same, the wheel base seems exactly the same, and the bottom of the seat seems exactly the same. When we start getting to the, uh, the armrests, they are the same, but you move your way down to the attachments from the armrest to the base of the chair or the base of the seat. Those definitely are different. Um, I know they're different pieces for a fact because they look different. And also, the ones on the new one seem a lot more durable than the ones on the old one. Um, something else that I noticed on this chair, um, design-wise, that was a little bit unique. I'll go ahead and step right off. Um, basically, the design of the whole chair is exactly the same. The only difference was the holes that are on the uh, right where the, uh, the neck rest pillow basically lies. This one actually has blue accents. That one has black accents on a green chair. If that had the green accents where the holes were, that would have been absolutely fire. But it is what I ordered and it doesn't really bother me. I'm just saying that is new that I've noticed from this model to the old model. Now, um, another thing that I noticed was the, uh, the little side piece or the side lever right here that puts the chair back is uh, a lot larger on the new model, which is a huge plus. Uh, the old model, it's basically about half the size. Um, it feels a lot less, I mean, it feels a lot more plasticky on the old model. This new one feels a lot more durable and steady. And it also has finger grooves, so you can feel uh, little grooves on the, uh, the lever when you pull it. Uh, so it's a lot easier and a lot more comfortable to use than the old model. The old model, I, I felt like I could only use two to one finger to go ahead and move that thing and it was really, really difficult and I usually didn't really put it back too much. But this one, it's a lot more comfortable. Um, and what else did I notice? Oh, the last part that I noticed was the plastic pieces on the side of the chair here that go ahead and cover the screws and stuff are a lot smaller on this one. Um, they have a little bit of a design theme to it as well with like little grooves built in, uh, which is really, really nice compared to the old ones, which are really, really bulky on the side. And they're just basically bulky pieces of plastic covering up screws that it seems like. So the design on the new model is a little bit different than the old model, not by much, you probably won't even notice. Um, but there's a couple of things like I just showed you that I've noticed uh, that are different from the old model of three years ago to the new model. The new model feels a lot more durable. However, that could be because that chair's uh, three years old. Um, that, I'm not saying that chair's gonna die anytime soon. That chair is absolutely almost in perfect condition. I don't feel a change since I've gotten it for three years. This chair is just brand new and it just feels a lot more stiffer. So you probably have to go ahead and get some wear and tear into it a little bit. Um, but other than that, both chairs are pretty much identical except for a couple of pieces here and there. Um, I believe they just upgraded the pieces so uh, it's a longer lasting in the newer models. But other than that, thank you all very much for tuning in. Please, please, please check out the description box down below. You'll be able to find all the GT Omega Racing links um, from whether you're in Canada, US, UK, and elsewhere. 
find the links down below. Go ahead and go to your designated site. You can save 5% with my code for the Winitachi, same as my channel name. Uh, we also have the code. You can just copy and paste it from down in the description box down below. Uh, save 5% on your order, which is actually a significant amount. And also, uh, they, they sometimes have deals on their website. So I don't know if you guys know this, but a lot of people don't realize you can use the deals that they already have marked down on their products. So let's say um, this chair, they have a whopping 40% off on it. So you can get 40% off on this chair. And then you can also attach the coupon code because the, uh, the sale price that they already have is the actual price that you'll be putting in with no coupon codes because they've already put that on. And uh, basically, you'll be able to use my code to get an additional 5% on top of the 40% that they're already giving you. So don't be afraid to go ahead and try my code if they uh, have a discount already going on. You can stack codes, not stack codes, but you can stack discounts on their website. So thank you all very much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this video. Catch you guys around. Peace.